Hi, Jim from Realtruth.net. Bringing another real truth from the Word of Yahweh to you. This lesson eight is on the resurrection. And there are a lot of beliefs out there on the resurrection you can go to YouTube and you can look them all up and and get yourself really confused by the doctrines of men <clears throat> but I've put together here simply the word of Yah and what it says throughout <clears throat> the uh, New Covenant scriptures that we have that we rely upon and without <clears throat> men's philosophies uh, we'll go through these now I'm not even going into all of the false teachings and the false doctrines I'm not here to argue with anybody about that because the word is true and men are liars so we will go <clears throat> by the word and the first place where we read of the resurrection is when Yeshua was speaking to the disciples <clears throat> and he was answering their questions and here I'm going to come back. I'm going to go up here. I'll just <clears throat> read a little bit in Matthew 24. Because Matthew and Mark are kind of the same. Uh, it's the same question that was answered. And Yeshua went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. And Yeshua said unto them, See you not all these things? Look at them. Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. <clears throat> and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? It's one question. What shall be the sign of your coming to and the end of the world? So kind of three questions were answered, asked here. And we're going to talk here about what shall be the sign of your coming. <clears throat> what What is this? Th this is what we're concentrating on here. So, and we'll be coming back here to read a little bit more in Matthew. But right now, Matthew 29, it says, Immediately, Yeshua said, this is Yeshua. Do you believe Yeshua? Do you follow him? Is he your master? Is he your teacher? If he is, then you'll believe these words. If he's not, you'll have some other doctrine or some other uh, la-la land type of uh, belief. But if he is here truly your master and truly your teacher, this is what he said. Immediately after the tribulation, of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken <clears throat> and then notice and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven now not until not until all this here happens. It's then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. This is what Yeshua said. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. <clears throat> and you'll remember... If you go to Acts and go to the end of, well, as soon as you go to Acts, <clears throat> they were standing there looking up when Yeshua was taken away from them in the cloud. 
And he said, In like manner you will see me return. And he says, In like manner, I mean, well, obviously the return is going to be a little bit different. But, and the angel said to them, What are you looking here? Why are you standing up here looking at the sky? In like manner, he's going to come back. So, uh, and when he does, all of the earth is going to see him. Okay. The tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming <clears throat> in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And then, and then, folks, he says, and then, he could have said, I, because that's what he's, he, he's referred to himself as he here, because he's talking about the Son of Man, but he goes, and then he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds <clears throat> from one end of heaven to the other. In other words, this is the rapture, if you want to use that word, or the resurrection. This is the first resurrection. He's in the clouds. Everybody is seeing him, and the trump is sound. Then in Mark, <clears throat> and again, Yeshua, it's the repeat of the same thing. It's just written by another, uh, another man. But take you heed. Behold, I have foretold you all things. See, we, we, we cannot be in darkness here. Because what he said, he has foretold you all things. He's foretold us all of these things. So there's no need for us to be in darkness. There's not even any need for us to have a discussion. All we need to do is believe the word. But in those days, after the tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars of heaven shall fall. And the powers that are in the heavens shall be shaken. Same thing that was said in Matthew above, right? Same thing. Exact same words. <clears throat> Two men heard the same message and they didn't get it wrong. <clears throat> and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and great glory. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. <clears throat> so we have two witnesses that heard what Yeshua said. And the two witnesses never messed it up. They wrote it exactly the same. <clears throat> He's gathering his elect. Are we his elect? Do we belong to him? Is that what you're going to say? You're his elect? Then you're going to be part of this, right? You're not in some other la-la uh, land, mysterious, secret type thing taking place. Everything is open. <clears throat> in Revelations, sorry, in Revelation 6, 14, And the heavens departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bond man, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks <clears throat> of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Um, it's, it's a perfect parallel here, right? <clears throat> Where it says um, then shall all the tribes of the earth 
mourn. Now Mark left that out, but but it is here in Matthew. Then all the tribes of the earth mourn. This right here tells you that this right here is the same exact event. And nothing different. They're mourning, fall on us rocks, hide us from the face of him that is on the throne from the wrath of the Lamb for the great day of this wrath has come and who shall be able to stand? Will you and I be able to stand? Will we or are we going to be destroyed? Will we be taken up when he comes? Or will we not? Now in 1 Corinthians 15 now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. In other words, we in our bodies are not going to inherit that eternal. Okay? He says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed go back up here <clears throat> and what does it say here and he shall send his angels with a loud trump the last trump, this trump, this resurrection trump. That is the same event. The exact same event. <clears throat> For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. 1 Corinthians 15, 54 <clears throat> is where I'm at. So... When this corruption shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality. And this, folks, get this. Please, please grasp this. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory death has not yet been swallowed up in victory the dead are still in the graves of sleep we still are going to see death <clears throat> and until this resurrection event takes place it's when this resurrection event takes place <clears throat> is when this saying is going to come to pass death is swallowed up in victory this is a, a future event yet to take place so you can sin and fall and you can lose your life so you better be obedient and you better be righteous because that victory doesn't happen until Yeshua returns now in First Thessalonians 4.16 For the Master himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and what? With the trump of Yahweh and the dead in the Messiah shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the master in the air and so shall we ever be with the master we will forever be with our master Yeshua our older brother the king <clears throat> therefore comfort one another with these words be comforted and know that 
when we see those clouds part, when he returns, this is what is going to happen. There's no secret little rapture here, and then there's a little rapture here, and then another one here, and then another one. There's none of this stuff. It's all one event. By the word of Yahweh, it is one event. <clears throat> it happens one time. And all of the righteous are gathered. I know there's there's teachings out there that say, well, it's not till the end of the millennium, uh, you know, after the thousand years, and that uh, it doesn't, I don't care. All right, I do not care. This is the word. I don't care. If you don't believe this, then you don't believe the word. That's just as simple as that. You are not a believer if you do not believe what has just been said here, what <clears throat> what this word says. What what I am preaching right now is the gospel truth, and if you don't believe it, then you don't believe the word. If you have some other type of philosophy or theology or doctrine from this, that this is that there's only one event, then you don't have the word. Because it's this is the word. <clears throat> 2 Timothy 3.16 I was just reading this tonight and I had to throw this in here because it, it struck me here what, uh, what was said in 2 Timothy. And Paul says to Timothy, All scripture is given by the inspiration of Yahweh and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. If that's what this is, then is it instructing you <clears throat> in truth, in righteousness, in doctrine? That the man of Yahweh may be perfect. You notice we have to be perfect. Thoroughly finished unto all good works. <clears throat> nothing is, <clears throat> we gain nothing without the works. Then Second Timothy four one, it continues. You know chapters and verse blah blah, but it continues on. I charge you therefore before Yahweh, and the Master Yeshua the Messiah, who will judge the living and the dead. It says quick here, but the living that's what that means, and the dead, at His appearing and His kingdom. It's all being done. It's the same event. What is the judgment at his at his appearing and his kingdom? What happens when he comes? He brings the kingdom. And and what is the judgment? How is he judging the quick and dead? There is no salvation for any flesh and blood after Yeshua returns in the clouds. It is over. The judgment is already done. That's just so simple. <clears throat> I'm not even going into all the the crazy, crazy teachings out there. People that teach, well, you can accept in the judgment. No, you can't. Where the tree falls, there it lies. And that is why this verse right here says this. Listen to the verse. And listen to what he said. I charge you, Timothy, before, therefore, I charge you, Timothy, before Yahweh. He's bringing Yahweh. He's bringing the Creator into this. And the Master, Yeshua, the Messiah. He's bringing them both into this. And what does he say? Who will judge the living and the dead. If I'm alive, I'm being judged. Will I be, will I be, uh, quote, changed, or will I not? If you're not changed when he returns, you you're done. And this is all happening at his appearing and his kingdom. And therefore, Paul goes on to Timothy, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. 
reprove, rebuke, exhort in all long suffering and doctrine. And why is that? Because this is what's actually <clears throat> this is actually what's happening to us. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. Folks, if you're hearing this and you have any other doctrine than this right here that I'm bringing to you, this word, these words out of the word of Yahweh spoken unto us by Yeshua the Messiah his son who was subservient to him who was born of him who came forth from him who was created by him spoke these things to us and if you don't believe him if you have some other doctrine, <clears throat> then you do not insert endured sound doctrine, and you of your own lusts have heaped yourself teachers and having itching ears, and you've turned the truth into a fable. In First John 2.26, <clears throat> he says, These things I write to you concerning those who try to deceive you. And what does he say? He goes in verse 27, 1 John 2, 27. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. You see this? Oh, you need the church. You've got to have a pastor. Oh, no. If you have the Spirit in you, you have no one needing to teach you. But at the same anoint, <clears throat> but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you shall abide in Him. And then what does He say in verse twenty-eight? Okay, now little children, abide in Him that when he appears we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming if you know that he is righteous you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him see do you know are you practicing righteousness are you keeping the law are you obeying or do you have some other fable or doctrine that you want to believe? Just like the doctrine of the resurrection. You got some other fable. But you notice, he says, When he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. I'm gonna, Hopefully the scrolling don't bother you. <clears throat> what is it? What does it say here? Who will judge the quick and the dead at his appearing when he comes? And, um, and again, the master shouts, and with the trump of God, the dead and rise. There's another one um, that we should not be ashamed, right? We should not be ashamed. Sorry about this. Forgive me for that. <clears throat> Are we a conf confident and not ashamed of this coming? at his coming in Revelations 20 starting at verse 1 <clears throat> and I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand and he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years how many believe that how many believe that that is really going to take place? It is. It's going to happen. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up 
and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more until the thousand years shall be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season. Who believes this? Who believes it? Again, are you believing false fables and doctrines? And I saw thrones, <clears throat> and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yeshua, and for the word of Yahweh, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with the Messiah a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until a thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the death has no power. But they shall be priests of Yahweh and of the Messiah, and shall reign with him a thousand years. <clears throat> the first resurrection. We just went through all of the uh, scriptures that showed that it was one event. This resurrection is one event. Now, I... I'm trying real hard to keep false teachings out of this but I have to explain this because there is a false teaching <clears throat> out there that says well Revelations 20 23 and 24 are saying that only those who have, did not worship the beast are the ones that are going to be ruling and reigning that are resurrected and the rest don't come forth <clears throat> until uh, at the end of the thousand years. That's another, it's completely different, but it, it it's using this verse as a soul doctrine verse and they cast off they cast off the other verses and I'll show you what I'm talking about here when we get up here to um, I'm sorry, I'm looking forward here. <clears throat> In um, Thessalonians and in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, uh, in a moment, in a twinkling eye by, at the last trump, the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised and incorruptible, and we shall be changed. This is all one event. And if we are alive <clears throat> with this, okay, with that teaching, and I'm sorry, I said I wasn't going to do this, and I'm, now I'm off on the tangent. With the teaching that these are the only ones, then what happened to the believers that didn't give the mark, that didn't take it, that are still alive? Are they still alive through the millennium? Alive in this human body that's corrupted and and dying? Are, are, you know, it doesn't it doesn't make sense. Now, here's what I'm going to say: is that these these people in here? It's just identifying some people. And may, and maybe those. And I'm I'm not going. You know, I'm not dead hard on a doctrine. Maybe these uh, that went through and didn't worship that came out of this tribulation <clears throat> and they they had their heads cut off and, and uh, even those that were alive maybe they got a little something special um, in the resurrection or in <clears throat> that thousand years ruling and reigning. I don't know. I don't care. It's prophecy, it's future. Um, and I'll say, you think uh, <clears throat> you think these that got their heads cut off or that they're resisting this beast, is their trial really any more worse than <clears throat> all the our brothers and sisters that died in the lion's 
with the lions and the Colosseums under the Roman Empire that were burned to make light for the city at the like lanterns. I mean, think of the horrors that went on with our brothers and sisters of old. And and you, and you think about this, and, and we are so warned, we are so warned, don't get deceived by this thing that's coming. Do not be deceived. And and you think for one minute that all of a sudden, uh, Yahweh, who is no respecter of persons, who doesn't, hey, it, it don't matter, you're rich, poor, strong, weak, it don't matter. Everybody's the same. Everybody's treated the same. And you think that that all of a sudden there's going to be one little little group that's going to get zapped out with no persecution? Yeah, right, okay. Anyhow, if you want to believe your fables, believe your fables. I'm giving you the word. And, and I'm showing that this doctrine is saying that these are the only ones is not right. You're, we are reading this verse or you are reading this verse wrong because the rest of the scripture says there's one event which is the first resurrection because that's when he's judging <coughs> what you're saying is what you're saying when you say that is if he is going to judge the quick and the dead when he returns and he's resurrecting the dead out of the graves. He's only selecting a few that at the end he's got some other judgment to come. Yeah, there there will be a judgment, a great white throne judgment, but that's just going to meter out how much punishment the evil people get. That's what that's all about. Oh, I digress. Sorry. <clears throat> this is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection, and such the second death has no power. And they shall be priests of Yahweh and of the Messiah, and shall reign with him a thousand years. <clears throat> now, Matthew twenty four, thirty six. Going off in a little different direction, <clears throat> but again, Let's make sure that we understand there's so many things out here on YouTube and out there in the world and doctrines of people selling billions of dollars in books and everything else telling you the day and the hour. And you'll even hear men say, well, we can know. Well, Yeshua said, Matthew 24, 36, But of that day and hour knows no man, no, not the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but my Father only. And of Mark 13, 32, But of that day and that hour knows no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. And it could say, but the Father only. <clears throat> Folks, Yeshua, our high priest, after the order of Melchizedek, is sitting at the right hand of the Almighty Elohim, Yahweh, the Creator, the One who created the heaven and the earth. He is sitting there waiting, and He does not know when his father is going to turn to him and say, Son, go and take care of the business. He is sitting there waiting. And he does not know. And if you say that he does or you have any other doctrine than that, then you're a fable and a lie and everything else that goes with it. You don't believe the word. And I'm giving you the word. He said, Verily, in Matthew 24, 34, Verily, verily, I say unto you, This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. So, <clears throat> we're sitting here. Now, he said that to that generation, this generation, what generation? We. The point of it is, is this is 34. This is right before he talked about the day and the hour. 
and he's talking about the generation that sees these things that it's not going to pass till all things are fulfilled. Then in Matthew 24, 42, <clears throat> he says, Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your master doth come. Therefore, be you also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man comes. Take you heed, watch and pray, for ye do not know when the time is. I'm sorry, and that was Mark 13:33. Then in Matthew 24:35, goes the heaven and the earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away, folks. These words that I've given you are what he's spoken. They're, you can't not misinterpret them. If you don't understand that first resurrection is a one-time single event, then you do not believe the word. Then you have seducing spirits and different fables that you are believing. That's just the truth. Mark 13, 31. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Two witnesses. Three. Yeshua said it. Matthew wrote it. Mark wrote it. And all of his apostles heard it. <clears throat> then, in Revelations, Revelation, um, well, we've already, I've already pulled this in. I don't think I need to reread this. I could. Revelation 6, 12, And I beheld, made it open the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell upon the earth, even as a fig cast her untimely figs when she is shaken in a mighty wind. Does this not sound just like what we read in Matthew and Mark? The sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light. Yeah, it says here, um, uh, become blood, but it's the same event. Because the heavens are departing as a scroll, islands are moved out of the place, the kings of the earth mourn. Same event, folks, same event. Revelations 19:11 And I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he doth judge and make war and his eyes are as a flame of fire on his head are many crowns and he had a name written which no man knew but he himself and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and in his and his name is called the word of Yahweh. And what? The armies which are in the heaven followed him upon the white horses, clothed in fine linen, clean and white, <clears throat> coming in the clouds. This is that event. Again, the very same event. Revelations 19. And 15, and out of his mouth goes his sharp sword, and with it he shall smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. See, there's no salvation here, folks. He's ruling with a rod of iron. Do it, or you don't get rain. Do it, or you, you get punished. You don't have any choice, people. You're wicked, and you're being ruled with a rod of iron. And he treads the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty Yahweh. And he has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Master of Masters. And so, I say to you, read your Bible. I want to say, believe your Bible. There is one event, one event. Now I'm just going to pop over here <clears throat> and I want to read this because this is what men do. We have heard 
of this event right here. He's coming immediately after the tribulation of those days. The sun is darkened. The Son of Man appears in the sky with great glory. He sends his angels together to the four winds. Okay. Then we're told to learn the parable of the fig tree, which we have read. And uh, that's where he goes. Likewise, when you see these things appear, which he said, the earthquakes, famines, and things that we see out here today, he's saying your generation shall not pass until these things be fulfilled. <clears throat> okay. And then the day and the hour, no man knows. Then, here's what they do. They go, well, this is the rapture here. 38, 39, 40, two shall be taken, one shall be left. That's the rapture, and that's, you know, this is something different. No, it's not. It's not any different. There's nothing different about this than if you go back to Genesis 1, you look at the creation, and Genesis 2 is a an expansion of that and tells you what happened and gives you a little bit more information and that's all this is. He comes down and he goes, now as it were in the day of Noah, so it shall be the coming of the Son of Man. They were eating, drinking, marrying, given in marriage uh, until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came. And guess what? It was too late. And if there's anything this should tell you right here is if you don't have this right at this moment right now if it when he appears when that sign appears it's too late it's too late because <clears throat> it says so shall also be the coming of the sign of the son of man now the coming of the son of man it goes to be in the field, one taking the other left. Two women grinding, one taking the other watch. Watch! For you know not what hour your master doth come. Therefore, he, <clears throat> and he's telling you to watch, therefore be you also ready. For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man comes. That is Matthew twenty four forty four. Who then, in 45, who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord has made rule over his household to give him meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he comes, finding so doing. It is going to be too late to try to jump up and do it when he comes. You'll be crying for the rocks to fall upon you and to hide you from the face of his wrath. So folks, get it ready. Read your Bible and know and understand that first resurrection is one event. We've just shown you the scripture. Believe your master. If you believe your master, you know this is it. There's no no. Uh, secret event taking place he will be appear in the sky and every eye shall see him thank you for listening